In this video, I chat with Michael Paul and Alina about how to level up your career as an independent adjuster, starting now. You're watching Adjuster TV, adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by Paysetter Claim Service. Download the remote work guide at adjustertv.com slash paysetter and by Adjuster TV Plus. Advanced scoping and estimating training videos for independent adjusters. Ride along with us at adjustertvplus.com. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. So we're doing another one of our coaching calls and I'm here with Michael Paul and Alina. And um, they've got some pretty pretty interesting questions, some pretty specific questions. Um, they have some, some uh, experience under the belt at this point, um, but they want to kind of get a, a seems like from their questions, they want to kind of get a little bit of a lay of the land um, going forward and what that looks like as far as how to grow into this career and what other opportunities there are. So uh, welcome to Adjuster TV, guys. Uh, I'll go ahead and toss it over to you guys. Uh, kind of tell us a little bit about who you are, uh, where you're from, what your experience level is, like how many claims you close and kind of where you guys want to go. Okay. Uh, so I'm former military, uh, started this uh, career field uh, about two years ago. I guess it's a little over two years. Thank you we're for your service. About, thanks, yeah. Uh, we're about 300 claims in. So uh, we've got our feet wet uh, quite literally in uh, Louisiana a few times. <laughs> but uh, definitely look forward to learning some more and super excited to get a phone call from uh, or get a phone call with someone that's got a lot of experience, had some other mentors in the business that have been just valuable resources. And yeah, we're just kind of in a position where we have enough knowledge to be dangerous and want to just continue to hone our craft and really feel like uh, we can kind of maybe get a better idea about uh, where we should put some of our efforts and energy. Um, and we're, uh, my name is Alina, it's Michael Paul. Uh, we're, in, we're based out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, um, but we are very, flexible and mobile. Sure. Um, so we've traveled several different states already in the last couple of years uh, for cats. Um, and yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you, uh, why don't we kind of launch into your first question? Um, looks like about specialization. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, um, what are your thoughts on developing a primary expertise? Uh, a little bit more of the, along that idea, like, should we should a new slash developing independent adjuster or adjusters, but focus on a particular type of peril, such as water, wind, et cetera? Um, you know, what are some of the pros and cons of becoming an expert, so to speak, in a certain peril? Um, just kind of want some direction on, I, I know at the beginning, like, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And that's where we definitely were. We're like, oh, there's damage. We'll take it. And sure. now we're kind of wondering if there's, um, you know, we've heard people say like, oh, I only run these or I enjoy, I really enjoy these. And maybe that's the answer. Maybe the answer is preference. And it's kind of what, what puts uh, food on the table is, is uh, always a good claim maybe or something. So that's kind of where we're wanting direction on that. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. So when you're thinking about like the next five to 10 plus years, like what what do you do you have any sort of like a you know lifestyle design ideas in your head about where you want to be like your, how much you want to travel or not travel um what do, what is the what are the next you know what's the next decade or so look like and maybe beyond that for you guys yeah um you want me to answer yeah, go yeah. For it. so to answer that i would say we love traveling we enjoy the uh to a certain degree we enjoy the spontaneity right uh some of those have its challenges but we do enjoy that uh, we'd like to get a sailboat at some point uh, and sail. Um, we were just talking to some friends. We were on their sailboat the other day down in the Keys, and they were like, yeah, we travel full time. And, you know, the only thing they own that's not on their boat is a car sitting in a marina. So, you know, right. something like that would work for us. So we travel while we're working and then while we're not working. Yeah. We're more specifically where we want to go, yeah. Yeah. Um, whether that's international or, you know, here in the U.S. So. Uh, so well, I guess so in, as it pertains to working, 
Yeah, I mean, I don't have a desire to like only do desk adjusting, but if we could supplement that, you know, a couple months out of the year, six months or so or less or something, and, um, in order to facilitate being, you know, completely mobile, um, that would be great. Uh, but I, I don't really, I, I don't really intend on like giving up doing actual inspections because uh, I, frankly, I enjoy. I enjoy the dynamic of being outside and I don't really want to sit in front of my computer for 12 months a year. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I kind of like the variation. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah. so basically you're, you're, it sounds like what you, you know, kind of what I'm getting out of that is you're, you're looking to preserve um, your autonomy, right? Your ability, your flexibility to, you know, sure. yeah, totally. honey, let's, awesome. let's go to Thailand, you know, and then you go right for two weeks yeah. or whatever um or let's take the boat from key west to wherever right um so and, and the reason why i ask that is because you know if you if you look at a the, the sort of the, the career paths that are possible as a claims professional there's the sky is pretty much the limit i mean it's honestly so you can you know you can be in the field and sample every possible kind of claim type that you can that comes your way um, and then decide to go inside and get hired at a executive level at an IA firm, right? You could be a director of operations or whatever, depending on you know how ambitious you are in that direction. Obviously, you're gonna be sitting in front of a laptop 12 months out of the year most likely as an executive or a, a, like an upper level management person at a firm. Um, but, you know, on the flip side, you can absolutely be a catastrophe adjuster for the rest of your life if you want to. Um, but I would say, and this is a reason why I was basically asking, you know, like what your long-term plans are um, kind of dictates what, how you're going to like plan that, path um because if you if you want to like travel for a little while and then stay home that's then there's a set of things to do and if you if you want to always travel then you know you probably want to go this other way um okay. so i would say at this point i mean specializing is keeping all that in mind specializing in something is uh good um i would say from like if you were talking about cat property claims or doing deploy dailies, which is similar. And we can kind of, you know, if you haven't, did you watch the episode I did with James where we talked about daily claims? It's recent. Uh, we just watched your most recent one. The most recent one. Then, uh, did we talk? I don't know. I don't remember. His I know that, anyway. I know that some daily claims were brought up, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So I know I'll kind of explain those two options. So basically like, as far as like cat property goes, your options are residential, commercial, farm and ranch, condos, and then like maybe large loss contents, uh, ALE unit. There's there's a different little like sub things that you can do. Sure. Um, probably the most bang for your buck is going to be residential and commercial, just doing regular okay. claims. Um, and if okay. if you're so if you're if your goal is to just like sock back money while you're on cat, and then you know. When you're not on cat, I always recommend people work anyway, doing whatever. Um, but you can do the virtual claims. You can do desk review, you know, desk claims and file review and all that kind of stuff. Um, when in the downtime, so that you preserve that that big chunk of money that you made over the summer, um, and just not ever touch it, right? And then the next year you pile on to it again, and then you just keep, which is I think is no matter what anybody's goals are, I think that's the way to, to do it if you're going to be a cat adjuster. Um, but if you're, you know, wanting to do that for a little while and then you're, you you want to kind of cash out and buy a boat and, you know, cruise for a year or two or six months or 18, whatever it is, um, that's having that money socked back is going to really help you. Um, I think that uh, specializing, um, if, I, if I'm giving this advice to somebody who, who doesn't have that kind of like a no, little bit more of a nomadic wandering sort of like, you know, ideal lifestyle, which I did for a long time, which is why I was a cat adjuster for 20 years. Um, 
if, if it's for somebody who's going to do like the, the normal average where they're a CAT adjuster for two years, um, I'm going to suggest, and if they want to stay in insurance, which is, again, it's a very broad industry with, I mean, there's Marine, there's, you name it, there's all kinds, every, everything's insured, right? Or insurable. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's when I would, you know, you might want to think more about like really dialing in and specializing, um, but you can be, you know, you can be, you know, a commercial cat property adjuster and that's all you do and make probably more money than you would as a residential property adjuster doing cat because they're bigger claims. Right. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I would necessarily think about specializing as much as I would, uh, think about diversifying in this case so that you have a lot of opportunities, more opportunities all the time. Right. So in other words, if you, if you, if you do some work on an ALE unit where you're helping with additional living expense and total loss situations, right? And, and you, most of that's gonna be over the phone. Um, if you are doing large loss contents, um, you could be on site for that or you could be remote for that. Um, if, you know, like a wildfire, um, they may assign two adjusters to wildfire, like total loss fire claims like that. One person does the structural and the other person does the, the contents because the contents, I mean, every, look around you, every single thing in your whole entire building inside of the, and outside of the house is your personal property, right? Like the picture on the wall, your toothbrush, everything, right? Not just the couch and the TV and the laptop and the, the big thing. It's like every little small little knickknack thing. Um, and you have to have a full inventory of that. And that it's a full-time job to do large loss contents because there's so many, you know, you have to work with the homeowner in order to get their full contents list. And you can't just sit down with them in three hours and get the whole list, you know, because especially because, especially with a fire, everything's gone. They may have like a, a, a window of like attention where they drop off and they're just, I can't do it anymore. And it's an hour, right? So you may have to go meet with them five or six times over the course of two weeks in order to get your full contents list and with them even working on it, you know, alone on the side by themselves. Um, so that's, if, if you have a little bit of your hands, kind of a jack of all trades and trying to master as many as you can, um, then it makes you more deployable. It opens up more opportunities for you. Uh, when some, when a dispatcher is looking down the list and they're like, man, I really need somebody to do farm and ranch. We've got a bunch of farm and ranch, a derecho hits, you know, Northern Missouri, it's all farm and ranch up there. So we need somebody to go to run those claims. You've got, you're certified. If you've got experience with it, you've demonstrated, you know, your ability to do those kind of claims, then you, there, you're going to be on the list to get called for that. Um, if you've never done farm and ranch, your chances of them calling you are reduced. So I would say in this case, diversify more than specialize, but try everything. Like, you know, when you're talking to your dispatchers and your, the firms that you work for, be like, hey, listen, you know, we're, we're open to trying really any kind of claim that you have. You know, we want to make sure that we're as we're able to help you, the firm or the care and the carrier as much as possible, um, because we're, you know, my time is your time. Right. Basically, is what yeah. you're saying to them. Yeah. We're, we're here to serve you um, and help you get these claims closed. And we want to in whatever way that looks like. Right. Want to work from home? I thought that might get your attention. I'll cut to the chase here and tell you that the IA firm Paysetter Claim Service frequently has work from home opportunities for the field and also for desk work, which let's be honest, really just means work at home in your PJs. Still want to work in the field though? Paysetter's Evo platform is fully integrated with Hover. It is the best of the app-based claims handling systems out there right now. Technology is moving faster than ever and Paysetter is right there at the cutting edge. We put together a free guide to maximizing your productivity while working at home in your pajamas, along with a link to apply to this dynamic firm. And you can find both at adjustertv.com slash paysetter. Would you say that of those that you mentioned, like contents and ALE and of those during the non-cat time, would you say which of those, and I, I know it's a broad question because it depends on which area of the United States you're at, um, right. but which would keep generally which keeps you more busy or auto so like, yeah so i would say then you know in the and that those are all it sounds like all mostly going to be cat scenarios um where there's hurricanes wildfires and that sort of thing um major hailstorms 
you know, you're not going to see any ALE on a hailstorm, generally speaking, um, or um, uh, large loss contents. You might have half a dozen things that get broken by the hail. Um, so yeah. I would say that uh, this is where the deploy dailies come in, um, okay. which is you guys are in Florida. Um, right now it's February, you know, it's winter time, 2022. Um, what a lot of adjusters do and what I've, I've done in the past is you work cat from April, May through Halloween, maybe through Thanksgiving and then December, January, February, March, probably maybe even into April, um, you make yourself available to do daily claims anywhere in the country. Right. And this is, this is, kind of a, a, a best kept secret in our industry. The, the most of the firms, a lot of the firms, um, they not only do catastrophe work, but they also do daily claims for their clients, their carrier clients. And a lot of the times they're desperate, desperate for people um, in certain areas of the country, right? So you, maybe the Northeast, um, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Maine, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of people live up there, upstate New York. Um, the Northwest, right? So the I-5 corridor from Vancouver, uh, Canada to, you know, down through Portland and maybe even into Northern California, Southern California, 18 million people live down there. Um, so there's, they have a lot of claims all the time, right? And if you, if you call your firms and be like, you know, um, this is what, how I would frame it. I would, I would, you know, at the end of storm season, you know, everything's all wrapped up and it's, there's no hurricane or nothing, nothing else happened. Right. And it's like end of October. Um, I would call my firms and be like, Hey, listen, um, we, we want to stay busy through the winter and we wanted to see if you guys had any need anywhere in the country, you know? And so I would start listing off like high density population areas, Southern California, Bay area, anywhere on the West coast, the Pacific Northwest, Northeast, um, we're, we'd be happy to travel and go stay in a hotel and run daily claims for you for, you know, until storm season starts up again next spring, what do you think of that? Right. And run it by them and see what they say. Cause you want to make sure that okay. you're, you're framing it as, and by the way, when storm season kicks up, we're gone. Right. Cause we, you know, we're, yeah, we're paying right. for hotels and all that kind of stuff, but you know, I can tell you that a lot of the major firms, the people that I've talked to would like, they would, <laughs> they, they would be like telling you to write down the phone number to person, the dispatch person to call. We've got claims in the queue right now for you kind of thing. So okay. um, the deploy That's daily good, thing is you're going to be traveling the whole year, right? So you're going to be, it, it, it can get, it can wear you down. But you know, if you guys, if you got the mindset, right, that you're, you're in it for the long haul and you're, you're wanting to um, really set yourself up to get the boat or to buy the house or to, to whatever it is you want to do, um, then I think people can endure things a lot longer than they think they can. Yeah. Um, and it may turn out, you know, you may be doing so well in the Seattle area that you're like, forget about the hail season. We'll just stay up here and keep running claims because they're not going to stop coming in. And it's water claims, it's fire claims, it's vandalism claims, it's theft claims. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. neighbors pick up truck, Thanks. runs through the front yard yeah. and takes, takes out yeah. the, you know, corner of the house kind of thing. So there are, that's a big, and you're going to get a lot of experience handling a lot of different kinds of claims. And a lot of them are going to be bigger than typical hail claims. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Oh, you, we have another question. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, so question is just kind of uh, the idea of leveling up, right? So like, how to go from one step to the next is what do you feel is the best way for an adjuster team with a fuse experience to move to the next level like ourselves uh, we each have our own strengths but we're looking to level up and are, and are doing training that is offered by other companies obviously watching youtube videos by yourself <laughs> uh we've practiced writing estimates on our own homes our friends homes that sort of thing uh just looking for suggestions and resources as to most you know efficient. yeah kind of most, most efficient, efficient and, when we run cats, like how can we work together, together okay. uh, and most efficiently, and then what can we do um, in the off season to off keep season. that that synergy kind of in place? Um, or daily habits yeah. to continue professionally. Developing. Sure, sure. Um, so I would say, generally speaking, for you know, 
for any adjuster, whether you're by yourself or in a team or whatever, um, you need to keep your skills fresh, right? And you need to, I would, I would absolutely train on um, the latest apps, right? Core Logic, which is what Simbility right, yeah. used, to, used to be called or is called now. Everybody's going to call them Simbility, um, but they're, they want to be called, everything is Core Logic, right? And so they, they bought the company that has Settle Assist, which is a phone app thing um, that some, some of the carriers use. Um, so you want to learn that stuff um, before you get deployed onto an event where they're using Settle Assist. Because the last time I used Settle Assist, and it's been a little while, so it may have changed, but it was a little bit clunky. Um, it was a little weird to get through and I had to, it wasn't intuitive, I'll just put it that way. Um, okay. I'm gonna assume that it's it's changed since then because it's been a few years. Um, as far as, and then, and then it's like, you know, I would even go as far, so far as to say to get your level three Xactimate certification. Um, okay. Not because it's necessarily gonna look good on a resume, but because it will teach you where absolutely everything is in the software. So if you do get a total loss and they're like, we're stick building these, right? Then you can get the plans from the county and you can put it into Xactimate and sketch that sucker and, and less time than it would take if you were, you know, had less experience using sketch and didn't have that like really detailed training for that. Um, as far as like okay. teams go, uh, I think that there's, there's a few different ways to do it. And, and I would say um, ways that I've done it and ways that I, I've seen other people do it. Um, the things that, that tend to drag down one person, um, are, it's not like when, when a person is looking like for myself, when I'm looking for a way to be faster, to close more claims, um, and I'm looking to outsource something from my workflow, it's not going to be like I do inspections and they do estimates, right? Um, which can work and I've seen people do it. Um, for me, it's phone work, right? So, and emails and like keeping up with the, there's a lot of times you'll get a, a toll free voicemail number that you got to check every day, um, that, that the firm gives you, right? Um, you have to check those things every day. You can't let calls, you guys yeah. know this, and, you know, 300 sure. claims in, you absolutely know that the phone like is a big pain in the rerun. Um, so you can either, right. If you're working together as a team, you can either, you know, Michael Paul, you're going to be the phone guy. Um, and Alina, you're going to do the, the, the scopes and write the estimates and do it that way. Right. Or vice versa, whatever it is. Um, the way that I, I, I've seen a married couple do it, um, that I was really impressed by. And I feel like that's probably, uh, and actually they didn't even do this, but I was like thinking about it, you know, how they would, they would do this. Both of them were licensed. They both got their own claims. They're, they were known by the firm and the carrier as a, as a husband and wife team that got their own claims. Right. And he did like seven or eight claims a day and she did five or six. Right. Which together, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're as, as a couple, you're, you know, your expenses are like one person more or less. Yeah. Um, right. So when you're, when you're doing able to do seven plus five, you know, say 12 closed claims a day, that's, that's a really good a volume, you know, and it's not killing them. Right. That's a, that's a, um, like it for, especially for hail claims, that's a, uh, a production level that they can sustain. It's easy for them. They get home. They've got their systems down. They're both super duper sharp, both really good at it. Um, I thought when I thought, think about this, I'm like, man, that would be pretty awesome. And if they had an assistant, like one person that just handled all their phone calls, right. Um, handled their desk work, their admin stuff, um, not writing estimates, but like, just like making sure that their communications were all to current, right. When people call and leave a voicemail or, or they're scheduling, right. Here's how I like to have my claims scheduled, you know, make my contact calls. Hi, my name's, uh, Susan Smith and I'm, uh, Michael Paul's, uh, uh, assistant and he he's asked me to call you and set up an appointment i have a, f a handful of questions for you and then i've got a, a date and time for to set the appointment um blah 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 right if you have any further questions and you need to talk to michael paul then here's his number or i can have him call you or whatever it is um and most people are pretty good with that 
right? Um, and especially these days where there's, you know, there's apps out there, which you can text message, t texting somebody counts as a contact. Uh, so I think it'd be better to have somebody call, um, have a human voice doing it, right? So then day one, you guys are in the field. Alina, you've got your claims. Michael Paul, you've got your claims. And then you've got somebody like calling the rest of your, well, all your appointments. Um, and then keeping up with, with the voice, the, the calls that come back in, right? Because if, when you're out scoping, if you answer the phone and you're standing up on a roof, you're, you're going to instantly add like a half an hour to that scope because yeah. right, you're, you're trying to talk to that person. You got to jump off the, the roof and get in the truck and pull up the, and then you got to figure out where you were. Um, right. So my suggestion, long story short, would be to both of you guys run claims, your own claims, um, make it clear to the firm that you guys are a team that you're going to want to work the same zip codes. You both have your own vehicle, right? Um, and then hire an assistant. I think that that would probably be the most bang for the buck because if you work to get, so in other words, like if you, if like you can do seven, like let's say you can both do seven claims, right? So it's 14 closed claims a day. Um, if you try to work together and close 14 claims together, you still have to scope all those losses, right? So 14 scopes in a day, right? And then somebody's writing them up. Um, I think that it's easier to get that, that higher level of production um, with less stress because you're going to be if you, long term, if you're like really all in on this and you just like, you're the person who's, you have, they have to drag you away from the storm. Um, you need to be able to get sleep, right? So you can't stay up till two o'clock in the morning every night. Um, I think it's easier to get that production level up if you both run your own claims and you have an assistant that helps you both with your scheduling, you know, answering, you know, voicemails and all that kind of stuff, returning calls. Cause a lot of times people call back, Hey, I got your message. And uh, yeah, two o'clock on Thursday. Sounds great. You know, no need to call me back or whatever. So and if, if you're having to like answer that voicemail or answer the phone and to talk to that person, they may like start hitting you with questions. Um, so that would be my suggestion. That's my suggestion. I know that a lot of people do it differently. Somebody sits in the car and writes the estimate. The other person's got a radio on there, you know, this walkie talkie kind of deal. And he's like, all right, well here, you know, texting a picture of the roof diagram. And I think that works. We've had lots of, yeah. lots of things. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say they don't work, but it's, it definitely has its, its own logistical. The perks of that way is that we, we save on drive time. So on that yeah. last, on Ida, we were driving two hours to uh, inspections and I was oh, able yeah. to work the whole time. And um, so, but I definitely see uh, to be beneficial to both run our own. Um, yep. These days, there are a growing number of remote work opportunities for independent adjusters. With scoper writer programs popping up all over the place, you can do photo and scope in the field or you can just sit at home in your pajajays and write the estimates on what the scoper got when they were out in the field. And it doesn't matter where you live, as long as you have the internet, you can write claims as a desk adjuster, but you can't get that sweet gig without being licensed. So if you live in Nebraska, which doesn't require an adjuster to be licensed, you still have to have a New York license to write claims somebody scoped in New York, makes sense? Of all the credentials you need as an adjuster, there really is none more important than your adjuster license, especially your first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else, including some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. So you need Adjuster Pro. Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain your adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as an adjuster with resources for every licensing state, including dead simple CE packages. Adjuster Pro is the gold standard for adjuster licensing. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjuster pro right now. And you're not gonna have like, like, I was in the, the field for 20 years and I, I ran claims on six hurricanes. So the, you're not going to, hurricanes aren't going to be the, the most common thing that you do. It's going to be hail. You're going to have a hotel that's five minutes from your, the neighborhoods where you're working. Right. So this is the, the bread and butter, um, that you're going to, for your earnings as an adjuster come from wind and hail. Right. Uh, with some other things sprinkled in occasionally, like big wildfire occasionally, right? I've worked 
half a dozen wildfires, maybe 10 wildfires, um, six hurricanes, but I can't, I couldn't tell you how many hailstorms, dozens and dozens, probably more than a, well, I don't even know. I could, I, I, no way to know. I mean, I probably could figure it out, but it's a lot. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Yeah. And that's where yeah. I made most of my money. And then if there yeah. was a hurricane or a wildfire or something like that, then it was gravy, right? And it usually happened as hail season was starting to die down late summer, you know, early fall kind of thing, September, October, you start to get like stuff like that, that happens where you have a super long, super dry summer and uh, those major drought conditions in, on, in California, really anywhere on the West coast, Washington, Oregon, California, and then they get wildfires. We get them here in Montana, um, Colorado and, you know, and that's, it's usually, that was how that kind of ran was that usually those happen in the late summer. Um, but when I was already kind of wrapping up hail stuff, so hail is where it's, it, hail is where it's at. And again, I, like I said, I, I know somebody that's done the, the, the walkie talkie deal and they did, they loved it. They did great at it. She didn't want to do her own stuff. She just, she got super good at Xactimate and crushed it. And then she was on the phone and, um, they did, they did pretty well, but I don't think that they did more than. I did by myself with an, you know, I had an assistant, um, I, that I hired to, to set my schedule for me. So Do you have it, an assistant with you or did you just, was it remote? They just stayed home. I mean, it was my, yeah. I you hired my sister, uh, for a while and then I, you know, I hired somebody else and they, they didn't come with me. Um, okay. so I would just email her a list of the contacts and what I wanted them done and, and a little short list of questions for each one. And, you know, she sent me an email back saying contacted, contacted, left message, contacted, contacted, contacted. And that made things a lot easier for me. But she wasn't putting in things into a, an activity diary entry in Xactimate. Uh, I still had to jump into Xactimate and do all that stuff. So if I had somebody that's can do all that stuff, keep the file up to date and everything, that's that's going to free me up during the day to do one, two or three more claims as just as a solo, you know, sort of adjuster. Um, because you spend a lot of time on the phone and you, you don't want to be calling people at dinner time necessarily. Um, so I like to get, I like to get all that stuff done during the day and then go back to my hotel room and eat dinner and go to sleep, not stay up all night. <laughs> no, we all. <laughs> and, yeah. It's, you can do it. Yeah. Nobody believes me, but I <laughs> I did it for a long time. Uh, we have another question. So as yeah. we're getting more um, familiar with different firms that we want to work for, and we you know we've seen interest uh, claims that we we really want to work for, and others that we're like, well, we probably steer more towards the other one. So as we're kind of narrowing that down, um, do you suggest visiting the firms in person, and then if so? would you suggest like showing up unannounced and showing up to their office or should, you know, which we call make an appointment and just to introduce ourselves in person since we're, we're so, we are mobile oftentimes. And so we, you know, as we're looking up the addresses, we're like, Oh, we were right there. Um, yeah. what would you suggest? Um, I, I, I mean that that's above and beyond. Absolutely. And I don't think really hardly anybody does that. Um, a lot of times, sometimes those addresses, the building is full of um, like accountants and lawyers and people that aren't maybe associated with the claims, you know, dispatching claims and things like that. Those people may be remote themselves. You know, you may, the HQ is in Alabama, um, but all the managers that you work with are in Kansas City, right? Um, and they don't, you're not going to see that on their website necessarily. Um, Truthfully, you absolutely 100% want to get in front of those people. So your instincts are, are good there. Um, but, and really the, you know, this, not to make this like the NACA channel, <laughs> but it's that conference, that convention, uh, it's every January, uh, usually in Vegas this past year, this, or this year, 2022, there were 60 IA firms there. Um, which is all the major ones and tons of the, of the little yeah. more regional. Yeah, we, we, got, we were, yeah. we we were actually video. working uh, a storm uh, just in, in Georgia. Georgia. Um, yeah. Otherwise, we would have definitely. We missed not. it by like five or six, six days. Yeah, yeah. 
So I would recommend carving that out next year out of your, um, out of your calendar and saying, this is, we're going buy tickets, you know, make it happen because three, you get three days. It's this, this year it was four days long total. Um, three days of that were, um, the expo hall was open for interviews, right? And you, they got a little app, right? And you just make a, you schedule. I want to meet with pilot at 10 15 and I want to meet with alacrity at 10 45 and I'm, you know, whatever it is. And you can just spend the whole day, every single day interviewing with all those firms, sit down, you know, those, a lot of those people that are in those booths are, um, team managers, right? Or they're dispatchers or they're people, you know, di directors of operations who may be directly responsible for doing dispatch, uh, and, or, or building out th the roster and looking for people like they're, they're like the ones that actually do that instead of being like, you know, a recruiter that's hired, you know, that's doesn't really know much about, they just were, were brought on as a, like a, a consultant or whatever to, to just go to that conference and see if you can find some people for us. It's the people that run the company that are, okay. that are there. And, and a lot of them, they're CEOs and presidents and things like that. And you click with those people. Um, I mean, you meet them in person and then later on when you get on the phone with them, yeah, I remember seeing you, you know, you might've gone out for drinks or dinner or something like that with them. Cause a lot of times yeah. the big groups will just, they'll find themselves downstairs at the casino floor. And I, you guys have probably been to Vegas, but those casinos, they've got like a bunch of restaurants, you know, around the edge of the casino floor and people will just wander down after then, you know, like the, spend the day at the convention and then take a shower and go down to the Carlos and Charlie's at the downstairs. Right. And everybody's in yep. there, right. All those guys, yep. all those presidents, all those, you know, HR people, all those um, operations directors, everybody's down there and you walk up and just sit down at their table or sit down, they're standing around holding drinks, you know? Um, so a lot of networking happens at those, at that particular conference, um, especially after the actual convention itself. And you might find yourself, you know, going out to some fancy dinner with those guys or whatever it is. I mean, you, yeah. who knows? Anything can happen. It's Vegas yeah. anyway. So I mean, it's anything can happen. <laughs> yeah. um, so I would, I would strongly, strongly recommend networking events. Um, you can attend the, like outside of the NACA convention next year, between now and then, um, a lot of firms are having networking events. I know that uh, CNC is running stuff. Uh, Paysetter, you know, they've, they've been talking about doing their roadshow thing again this year. Um, I think Crawford's doing, they've Crawford's, their conference is the beginning of March in Orlando. I go to, That's I'll right. be there um, okay. for sure. They're, they've got a ton of training there and you can interview with them. And Crawford's a big company um, and they're, you know, they've been in the business for a very, very long time. Um, who else has got one? Eberl. Eberl has been doing, you know, they, they try to do little events around the country. Um, Eberl is owns Caddy, which is the CAD Institute. Take some, take some, you know, training with them. Cause I'll tell you what happens when you go to, yeah, whether it's a, yeah, whether you go to a carrier certification or it's just a straight up adjuster training, it's almost like a recruiting event, right? They're watching everybody who's in the room to see who's like, you know, trying to figure out how to turn their laptop on and the person who's asking great questions, it seems to be clicking with them. The work that they do, if it's the assignments in class, they're doing a great job at it. They're looking, they will pluck you out and pull you aside. I know pilot does it all the time. And people's like, man, pilot, after this training thing, they, they came and they pulled me aside and asked me if I wanted to go do X, Y, and Z. Glad you went, huh? <laughs> Even if it was 350 bucks yeah. or a thousand dollars or zero or whatever it was, you know, those, it's important to go to as many of those things as kinds of things as you absolutely can. My opinion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. We'll be going to yeah. training here uh, in, um, in next week or so. Like 10 days or something. In, uh, or something like back up in Georgia. Yeah. Um, so with, okay. the, that. with cross country adjusting. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's in the, we'll those, again, power. those are really good networking events as well. I mean, you'll see like, all right, everybody, let's take it. You guys want to take a 10 minute break? All right, well, you can come back here at uh, 1115. And then like everybody just piles up and is asking that the instructor questions, you know, handing out a resume and it's, you know, it gets a little bit goofy, but if, if you're, if you show up to those things, you know, opportunities present themselves. Absolutely. 
Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what okay. else you guys got? Anything else that's what, what kinda... about the uh, Matterport? Make, or or other you... apps? Um, yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not like trying to. Um, I'm not trying to take a shortcut, but at the right. same time, definitely recognize that you know technology changes things, and just want to stay abreast to what is changing and. Just how try to leverage be, that technology. How we can be yeah. most efficient. Yeah. Um, yep. Um, I think that, um, so Matterport, I have one. It's right sitting right over there. Um, you can get, you can, and that's like the, you can use your phone too. I mean, it's, if, you, if yeah. you have LiDAR, you know, at, like an iPhone 12 and up, above, um, you can use your phone as a, as a Matterport scanner. Um, it's fast and it makes a really cool, um, you can get an ESX floor plan out of it. Um, and, you know, it may be a little bit overkill for most claims, unless you've got like a, I would say like a, a fire that did damage in every room, like a lot of smoke damage and like, you know, personal property and stuff like that, but maybe didn't like totally burn the house down. Um, large loss water, you know, especially if it's more than, than six inches deep. Um, I think that probably the thing that's going to be the fastest and the cheapest, because you'll have to pay for an ESX. If you do a Matterport scan, it costs that they, and they charge, it's, it's like an Eagle view, like, you know, 50, 75 bucks, something like yeah. that per, per one. Um, if you use exact, Xactimate mobile, um, I've got a couple of videos on YouTube okay. where I don't know if you've seen them. I, I, I demo Xactimate mobile, like their AR sketch thing that they have in there. They've been developing that for over 10 years. And the first time I saw it was at the elevate conference in back in 2012. And it was terrible. I mean, it was like, it didn't work very well. And it was, you know, the line would like skew all over the place and you're trying to figure out how to, um, these days it's accurate and it's fast and it, the, the technology is so good that you don't have to stand there in one spot and like perfectly, you know, spin around or whatever. You can have a hallway that opens out into like a big living room with another hallway on the other side that has an L in it. Mm -hmm. And you just walk and you just tap that wall and you just go all the way around like the whole like perimeter of the room holding your phone and looking at the, cause it's got that LIDAR scanner and it. it's getting the distance and everything. Tap the wall seven, wall eight, wall nine, wall 27, whatever it is. And then when you get back to the, the very last one, it automatically draws the whole footprint of the room and you can look at it as a sketch and the measurements are to the inch. And it's as simple as just walking around tapping wall wow. one, two, three, four, five. It is amazing. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And then for windows, you're like, okay, a window opening and you tap that, click the bottom left, any corner, and then go to the opposite corner and tap it. And it gets you within a few inches, a couple inches of the op that opening, right? And then the doors, and then you can just, you can add on rooms. You could do a whole house and I think you can do it. You're getting a diagram, you're getting accurate measurements, you're getting windows and all the openings and everything um, all in one go, right? You're not getting photos. You can still take photos with the, with the Xactimate mobile app, um, which I would do, you know, you're in the guest bedroom, do your sketch thing and then get your photos overview one, right? And you can do the voice to text thing and then get the other shot and then get all your shots and label each one of them. And when you go to put that to, to you send that back up to the cloud and then you jump on your laptop and you pull it down from the cloud, the diagrams there, all your photos are there. Boom. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, that's, that's a, a lot of the time consuming part of, of doing yeah, a, a large sure. water loss is that because if you don't have that and you just have your laser, you can still be pretty fast, but it's all like, you got to draw it and then you have to transpose that into sketch, right. And draw it in sketch and make sure that the windows in the right spot or whatever. And it takes a lot, it takes time. Right. And then you right. take photos and label photos. And so exact, I think more than anything, Xactimate mobile is, is it's really kind of like, found its groove. It's, it's, I think it's something that's, that is, if, if an adjuster 
is not using it and they have a lot of water damage claims like you know large loss water it's de deployed daily claims you're going to be doing mostly water claims if you're not using exactimate mobile and you have to use exactimate then you're leaving money on the table for sure because you can close more claims in a day using exactimate mobile um, just because you're not spending all that extra time doing the diagramming and, and measuring and yeah. you know that redrawing really I did that? the Houston ice storm. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, uh, I did the Houston ice storm, and, or we did rather. And uh, <laughs> we literally had a friend that, I mean, he's been in the business for 10 years and he's very proficient, but he literally did 10 times the volume we did. And uh, I realized right then, I was like, I got to get faster. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, this is only my second storm, but still I'm like, he's 10 times faster than we are. That's uh that's so how many, so, and what was throwing us down was the interior sketching. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. 100%. I would say it's, I think you have to, in order to get Xactimate mobile, you have to pay for a pro subscription, which is a little bit more. Okay. Um, I think it's worth it. I mean, you okay. can, I think you can download it. I think you can do a trial version and mess around with it, like without having to pay for it. Don't quote me yeah. on that. Um, but you might check into that. Um, okay. It, you'll, it'll blow your mind. It's, it's pretty amazing. And I think it's versus the Matterport. Um, again, the, 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 the drawbacks to the Matterport, it comes in that great big gigantic case. Um, you have to set it up, right? It's got a tripod and you put it, screw it on to the top of the tripod. And then you have to, you can do, you know, link your phone to it or an iPad or whatever. And then you have to make sure nobody else is in the room. And then you walk around behind it as it spins and it scans. Um, and then you have to wait right, for it to upload into the Matterport's cloud. And then you have to, if you want to ESX, like a sketch diagram out of it, then you got to pay for it and wait for that. Xactimate Mobile, you know, totally kills the Matterport, I think, as far as like, which one would I choose? What Mobile about when you're working with uh, Symbility? Because we've worked with Xactimate and Symbility. We definitely have our preferences um, on which one we prefer. But with the Hover, uh, I'm sorry, with the Matterport, work with so the exactimate mobile does not work with civility i'm right. assuming no is the name matterport would work with civility um you know i don't know so it's core logic civility i don't i've never used it i never i know that that they're making up a lot of ground and there a lot of carriers are starting to pick up some core logic and so you absolutely 100,000 percent need to to learn it uh, I don't know. I know that they they bought a company that, like I said before, that um, developed Settle Assist and a handful of other apps. Um, so Settle Assist is not, at least it wasn't, it, it didn't do like a, a diagramming a feature on it. It was just like a, a kind of a way to tell the adjuster what to get. And then it would write an estimate based on like how many events were there and the, the dimensions of this slope and that slope and Etc. Um, so I don't know. Um, the Matterport, I mean, I don't know if uh, if Matterport, I th I'm pretty sure that it'll export a, um, a file type that's not ESX. It's like more like a 3D, you know, like dot OBJ or something or dot uh, I can't remember the, the, rest, the other ones, but they're, 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 they'll go into like architectural like drafting mm -hmm. programs and you know, rendering programs and things like that. Um, but I don't know that you can import something like that into core logic. I just don't know. And so because core logic is like yeah. Yeah. becoming a big deal, it's, it's a, I admit it's a deficiency on my part that I need to like get some more, get them on here to get interviewed and, and uh, get a demo and so that we can kind of like educate yeah. me and, and, in, that, uh, in that video. For yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, what else you guys got? Anything? Oh, um, one of your other videos. This is not a question that we we into, uh, anticipated. Uh, it was on the list, but uh, one of your other videos just recent. Uh, you talked about uh, just the photo and scope. Mm -hmm. um, what what firms are using that? And uh, just can you give us more information on that? Yeah. So photo and scope is is basically where it's an app based sort of a deal where you're you know, you, you 
download the app and you sign up for the program and everything and maybe they've got a little like webinar that shows you how to use it and what their their expectations for you as a photo photo and scoper or just a photo person um you get assignments in the app it pops up say, saying you know hey we got an appointment at four o'clock tomorrow yes or no decline accept right um and then you accept and you show up at the house at four o'clock tomorrow and start taking pictures in the app or take a video in the app. Um, and then you may be required to like hand write a scope or do some sort of a scope in, in the app. And then you hit upload and then you say to the homeowner, you say, Hey, thanks. You know, someone your desk adjuster will be in touch with you to go over the, you know, the full report and everything. Bye bye. And then you go on to the next one. Um, pilot has inspectors on demand.com. Um, Crawford, again, has wegolook.com. Um, and I think, I don't know if Inspectors On Demand does auto or not, but I know wegolook does auto and property. Um, so, and you, I, you know, you might check in with Pacesetter. They have their Evo program. Um, one thing I would say as well is to, is to do, consider doing ladder assist um, and or just plain roof inspections. Um, Crawford also has... Um, Crawford Inspection Services, which is cis.claims.global. Um, and that's, okay. you know, you can, you know, I, I think it's, I don't know if it's app based or not, um, but they, you know, you can get assignments to just go look at any roof outside of an insurance claim um, to, you know, be the person that goes out and has a two story ladder and the open harness and stuff and takes pictures and gives it to the whoever wants them and then you're out of there and you get paid for it. So there's a lot of little things like that that you can do that are kind of like Uber ish, Uber esque. If, as so it with were. those, you're not writing claims, you're just scoping. You're nope. not writing an estimate. Okay. No, nope. you may, uh, may have to diagram the roof and take photos and stuff, but you wouldn't be doing it. for that, for those things, you wouldn't be doing an estimate. For photo and scope, okay. you're not doing an estimate either. You're just doing taking pictures and maybe writing a scope saying, you know, replace five windows on this side with screens and that's the measurement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so along those lines, uh, as far as auto and I guess even marine, but um, you know, because there's a lot of boats in Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Um, do you feel like for someone in our position, you think maybe we'd be just casting a wider net or maybe like starting to chase too many different directions, trying to look into auto at the same time. What I think like auto is a great way. You can do a lot of auto stuff um, through the apps, right? Um, it's a great way to fill in the, the blanks in okay. your downtime when you're not, you know, totally like covered up in, you know, the kind of like your daily claims or your cat claims. I wouldn't yeah. be trying to do that. I wouldn't be trying to do, like if you get deployed to some place to do hail a hail storm, I wouldn't. I would only no. do that. I wouldn't try to do anything else. You won't have time to. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. We've been I don't have time to eat. And sleep. We've been in on enough storms now. <laughs> we can't yeah. get pulled to that much. Yeah. yeah. So, well, cool guys. I got to wrap it up, but uh, thank you so much for for agreeing to to let me put you on uh, the, the old internet. Um, this yeah, has been a cool sure. conversation. Yeah. Sorry and about some of the distractions in the back there. <laughs> no, totally fine. Totally fine. I didn't, it, you know, it's not going to come through in the video. Um, but I want to let you know that are you guys members of Adjuster TV Plus? We were, yeah. We're, we're members of it. I don't, is there a difference between members and plus or whatever? We have a subscription. Uh, yeah. So plus is like the more advanced training videos and it's, it, it costs, you know, it's, it's a monthly subscription or annual subscription. Yeah. Um, if you're, whether you're, you are or you're not, uh, in exchange for you guys agreeing to come on here, I'll give you a free year subscription to Adjust Your TV Plus. Oh, oh, oh cool. Thanks. Yeah. 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 You don't have to do that, but that's yeah, awesome. That's yeah. <laughs> nah, no problem. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, you bet. Well, Look, I hope you guys go ahead. You lived in Montana or, right? Bozeman? Or Bozeman. Is that where she, you said you live? Kalispell. Oh, okay. My brother lives in Bozeman. I don't know why. I, maybe that's why I thought she lived there. But anyway. It's a cool yeah. spot. That's a long drive. Like, yeah. yeah, I love yeah. Montana. It's a pretty cool state. But thank you guys yeah, so much for being on here. Okay. And you, uh, yeah. we'll catch up with you later. Okay, right. thanks. Bye. Right. Bye. Yeah. Adjuster TV.
Before I criticize a man, I like to walk a mile in his shoes. That way, when I do criticize him, I'm a mile away and I have his shoes.